Steve Hathaway, great to meet you. Yeah, likewise, pleasure. Yeah, thanks for coming in. It's good to good to have a chat and um, hear about your awesome story. So thanks very much. Thank you. Um, so UMF is all about inspiring people to achieve extraordinary things. So how and what during your life and career? I mean, doing amazing stuff into the ocean around the world has inspired you. Yeah, I think as a kid I've always loved the ocean and I was drawn to people that did incredible adventures in the ocean. So um, there was Zane Grey, um, like I was heavily into fishing, so Zane Grey, I, you know, looking at his stories and his photos in the early 1900s, he put New Zealand on the world fishing map and looking at his stories going, wow, those guys just live the coolest life, you know, it's just... And it felt like they were so unattainable and unachievable as a kid, you know, and, yeah. and, and other people that have inspired me along the way as well. And, and I've never kind of been satisfied about just listening to other people's stories I want to experience for myself. Yeah. So um, I look at, you know, some of the stuff that I've experienced even just the last few years and it's just like, you just pinch yourself and go, oh my goodness. It feels like I've actually surpassed some of the stuff they did, you know, like some yeah. of the animals, I, I just haven't been on boats and seen them or caught them, I've been in the water you know, with them yeah. and seeing them interacting with nature and filming it, you know, it's just unreal. Absolutely. And I mean, I, I read through some of your stuff and you got your t-shirt here that 93% of New Zealand is underwater, which is just incredible. So how did you first become attached to the ocean and attached to seeing this cool environment? I don't know. It's just, uh, I think we're all made in different ways. I think, yeah. you know, yeah. we've all got a little spark about something that we're passionate about when we're little and the ocean was always it for me. Yeah. And uh, I'd always be you know, if I ever went to the beach, I'd be bugging the person with a fishing rod and just yeah. chewing the ear off, asking any question I could, and yeah. it's always been that way. So okay. it's not something I've had to conjure up. Yeah, and when did you first start getting into diving and free diving and so on? Yeah, my dad was into scuba diving and my older brother was, and uh, I remember as a little nipper seeing my, my older brother swimming out at Coromandel going spear fishing and just being totally envious, and yeah. so, you know, he was inspirational as well. And, uh, you know, just when, probably when I was about 10 or 11, I got into snorkeling. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you know, I remember it so vividly, my first experience up at Fononaki, on the and first time I experienced blue water, we climbed over top of this island at Fononaki and, and went into this beautiful bay and all of a sudden it was blue water and like mm. all these beautiful coloured seaweeds moving around and, you know, a school of blue mau mau coming up to us. It's like, wow, you know, just hooked forever, just yeah. beautiful. Awesome. And um, talk about, to, just to talk a bit more about your story, I mean, um, obviously um, with your work as an underwater cameraman, you filmed um, so much footage and stuff that's been with BBC and Discovery and National Geographic, so it's absolutely amazing. So can you know, tell us a bit more about your vision of, of what you're trying to achieve? Yeah, well, just my vision is, like, I want to inspire people to love our ocean. Yeah. And I think as a Kiwi, you know, I, I love New Zealand with all my heart, you know. I'm, mm -hmm. And I think we're all pretty passionate about our country, and, and we're, we're really proud of our nation, you know. We can rattle off our natives on the land, that, yeah. you know, the Kiers, the Kākāpō, and the mm -hmm. Kaoris, and, you know, and the story goes on. Like, we can all na name a lot of natives. And, and the more I got into filming and, and around New Zealand, I just realised how special it was. And then I started hearing about this huge exclusive economic zone that's under our control, you know, and it works out to be about 93%. And then I found out from hanging out with some really cool scientists that they estimate about 70% of our natives live there, you know? And it's, this is part of New Zealand's story. This is yeah, who we yeah. are, this is our DNA, and it's like we celebrate what's on the land, and we celebrate the glistening ocean, you know? like. All Kiwis have the dream of having their batch and like sitting back at the beach and the world as well and the ocean is glistening, you know. Yeah. But underneath that surface is so mysterious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's and it's so unique to New Zealand and it's so special. And I want to bring that story alive. And yeah. and I think we it's have another an, part of the country, right? Yeah, 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 definitely. And I think we have an, a remarkable opportunity as a country to enhance the way the world sees us as well. Yeah. That the world already knows Kiwi brands, you know, the the land, how remarkable it is. But let's add the ocean to that, and it's like the story just gets better. Yeah, and and um, just in terms of um, the job as well. I mean, we've talked to so many people who love the ocean and just would love going out and diving, but you know, have haven't sort of managed to make it into a career like you have. So, what, what's your advice to people who who love it so much and would love to sort of work in it full time, and and um, whether it's diving or whatever? Like, how do you go about that? Yeah, well, just you know, for me, I got into this. Um, with not much of a business plan about me. You know, I, I, I had a dream of having a TV show about 20 years ago. I was a presenter for a locally made show and I thought, man, one day I want to do that with a budget, you know, and achieve that. And I had no background in camera or anything and so I took the punt 
about eight years ago and, and quit my job and with the dream of I'm going to do it. You know, I had no clue what I was doing. Yeah. So I think, you know, first and foremost, you've got to have a hang of a lot of passion because, um, you know, there's, there's plenty of dark days mm -hmm. when you're trying to do something, and especially with a vision like I've got. You know, it takes a quite a long time to instill that into other people. You know, my vision hasn't changed much in the last seven or eight years. Yeah. But it's just when you start getting a few runs and you're doing a few things well, and people start taking notice, you know, and it just okay. starts getting a bit of momentum. And we, we, we seem to be getting a lot of momentum now. Yeah, so kind of like find your niche in the whole, yep. like the ocean, and then try and just dominate that kind of thing. Yeah, and yeah. like I've got to be honest, like it's a struggle to make a living doing what I'm doing, yeah, yeah, you know, even yeah. on some of the cool jobs I've been on. And that's what I mean. It's like, man, you've got to have a lot of passion to hang in there. Like, I'd be doing a lot better financially if I was doing building. Yeah. But, like, I think I can actually make a difference what I'm doing with yeah. this, you know, and that's why I'm in it. Yeah, awesome. And um, I just want to talk a bit about the A&P scholarships and how that helped yeah. you actualise your, your dream. So you're obviously awarded by in 2014, and, and A&P is, through the scholarships, helping... Um, helping New Zealanders to own their tomorrow by encouraging them to take steps to achieve their dreams. So I, I guess firstly, what do you think made your thing unique to the judging panel? I think for us, like we've got a, probably a number of points of difference. Like we had some runs on the board. Yeah. You know, we had done, we had done 10 episodes for TV. Um, I think the quality was good mm -hmm. and people could appreciate that. They could appreciate that. Um, and I, because I've been narrowing down what my focus is yeah, yeah. and the vision, I had this big vision just narrowing down and I think our, it's just getting a lot sharper and I okay. think they could see that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's important to be pretty clear about where you're going. Yeah, definitely. And I think yeah. we our point of difference was um, a number of things that um, we ticked a few boxes like I had my 14 year old daughter that mm -hmm. was doing the show with me and yep. we're about inspiring kids so mm -hmm. everybody wants to inspire kids we're about the environment we're about the special part of New Zealand that not many people know about so I think I think combining those things together and yep. it was very cool cool and what advice would you give to other Kiwis looking at applying for an AMP scholarship I, I would say first and foremost go for it yeah yeah yep. unreal um, I, I think um, really sharpening your personal story is important yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because there's thousands of people that go for it yeah. and you know the, the judges are of an incredible calibre but the thing that I love about it is that the judges actually want all of us to succeed you know mm -hmm. unfortunately they can only take a few few winners but I think just really sharpening what you're about and um, and sharpening with other people and just making sure, well, can I actually inspire one or two people around me? If you can't inspire two people, you're not going to be inspire hundreds of people, yeah, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. So what's the biggest opportunity that the scholarship gave you? I think um, for me, it's been amazing like to be associated with AMP. Yeah. You know, it's like an iconic Australasian yeah. company. Yeah. And, um, you know, they... They not only want to back. They not only want to have winners, but they want to back their winners. They yeah, want yeah. to see us go further. You know. So I think having that association with AMP and to, um, you know, to m make more awareness about what we're doing has been invaluable. Awesome. And just on that point, I mean, for you personally, what does success look like for you when doing your thing? Success for me, I think the the times that I feel warmest inside. You know, as far as satisfied as I get comments from parents, like when they've just seen our new book, and yeah, I say, yeah. you know, what do the kids think about it? It's like, mm. well, the kids haven't even seen it yet because we've been reading it, you know? Mm. And, and as adults that are kind of getting into it, or I hear comments from parents going, oh my goodness, my kids have seen your DVD and they're on my case, but they want to go snorkeling at Goat Island all the time. Like that. Yeah. For me, that's success. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Is that what motivates you still, is it? Is oh, it? big time. Like one of our key things is like we want to inspire kids to love our ocean. You know, and we just want to create the best stories to engage people so it's yeah. fun, entertaining, educational, beautiful, yeah. combining all that together and when you actually see the outcome that we are actually inspiring people, it's like, oh my goodness, that's so satisfying. Yeah. And what makes New Zealand such an amazing place for this to happen, you know, because we've talked a wee bit about um, how, as you say, I mean 93% is underwater, but what, what makes the underwater thing so amazing? Well, I think um, the isolation of New Zealand. Yeah. Yeah, I think for for New Zealand underwater, we have to celebrate the uniqueness of what we are, not compare it to Fiji. We're never going to be 26, 28 degrees in yeah. inky blue water with tropical fish. That's not us. But our story is you go in the ocean here and we have luxurious seaweeds. You know, we have 950 different seaweeds in New Zealand and about 30% of them are unique to New Zealand. We have a very unique 
um, ocean story, and it's and it's really special. Like the amount of cetaceans, whales, and dolphins around there on our coast is very special. Even on the doorstep of New Zealand's biggest city, I've been out on the water um, on Monday and Sunday just a couple of days ago, and we had whales all around our boat. We had dolphins. We had thousands of gannets diving. We had huge big packs of pilchards getting herded up almost trying to climb onto the back of my boat you know and yeah. this is on the doorstep of our biggest city yeah. and a lot of us don't even realize it's here it's incredible yeah it is absolutely and and obviously i mean you've managed to build a, a real career around around filming and um, doing sort of underwater camera work and can you tell us a bit more about how you started filming for shows um, with bbc and national geographic and young ocean explorers and so on yeah well the first thing that i started filming i kind of fell on my feet that I got connected with Ingrid Visser um, from Orca Research um, and so she got me into film Orca Underwater and uh, so I've been very very fortunate that I've filmed Orca Underwater a lot and so that's been on a lot of international shows yeah. and so I think that's probably one thing I've got a reputation for but that's opened doors for other marine mammals as well so I've just been working with BBC filming some unique stuff happening off the coast here and it's one of the pinch myself moments yeah, that yeah. 10 or 12 years ago, I'm watching Blue Planet, which is my favorite series from BBC by a million miles. And, and you're kind of doing it. Oh, and now I'm doing it. Yeah, I was yeah. working on my boat. I had one of the producers from Blue Planet on my boat, and I'm working with him as a peer. It's like, oh my goodness, it's like, how did this happen? You yeah, know, it's amazing. Absolutely. And um, to talk a bit more about the actual diving side of things and um, your advice for people who are, who are divers and so on. I mean, where do you see um, like mistakes happening with divers in particular? Yeah, well, mistakes happening with divers. I think you know it's just really thinking through a good plan and 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 with good safety protocols that you always dive with a buddy. You know, you check the conditions. Yeah. You really do your homework on a location. Okay. You know, you have somebody on your boat. Just it's pretty sensible stuff. If you're not feeling well, don't dive. Yeah, yeah. And have you had some close calls that you've learned some big lessons from? Or? Oh, yep. Yeah, I you know I have had a couple of close calls, um, and especially younger. And I think it's. Um, when I was going for crayfish, you know, I'm pretty competitive and yeah. I was diving alone. My friend had yeah. just been down diving deep and he'd come up with three crayfish. And so in my mind, it's like, I've got to beat my mate. I've got to beat my yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I put myself into a very stupid situation, got stuck in a hole and I couldn't get out for a long time. And yeah. I literally saw my lights flashing before my eyes. I mm. thought I was over, you know, mm. Mm. and it was a wake up call. Okay, great. And um, just before we get into our quick fire questions, um, I can imagine, you know, we've talked about some of the amazing experiences you've had of filming some of these incredible animals. So what, when you look back, I mean, what would you say is like the highlight moment where you go, that was just oh. the coolest thing ever? No, it's too hard. Too hard. <laughs> There's yeah. no such thing as a highlight moment. Okay. I think for me is I love seeing stuff I've never seen before. Yeah. And so, yes, filming orca, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've just been filming false killer whales. Okay. And they are so elusive. They're so hard to film. Mm. And... They, that gets addictive to me. It's like I want to do more of that. They just their story hasn't been told properly, and I want to be part of opening up people's eyes about that. You know. Yeah. And so, and but even the small things on the reef, like triple fins, they should be um, in New Zealand. This is one of the special stories in New Zealand that um, we we're, we're the triple fin capital of the world. We've got 26 species that are unique to New Zealand out of about 130 worldwide. The, wow. um, and they're the most um, prolific fish on the reef around New Zealand. You know, mm -hmm. any kid should be able to put on a mask anywhere around New Zealand, around a rocky foreshore, and put their head in the water and find triple fins. They exactly. should be as famous as the Kiwi, yeah. yet most yeah. Kiwis don't even know about them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I fell in love with filming triple fins for quite a while, you know. Okay. My, my, parent, my kids would roll their eyes and I'd, dude, you're going on about it. But, you know, when we did a story about triple fins for young ocean explorers, now my daughter has a poster of triple fins above her bed and it's oh, like, really? oh yeah, I won that one. <laughs> I turned her around. Yeah, absolutely. And um, in summary, I mean, Steve, what would you say is your top bits of advice for people wanting to make a career out of the ocean? Well, I think being really passionate about it. Yeah. Um, upskill yourself as much as you possibly can and find a point of difference from other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because there's a lot of people that want to make a career in the ocean and I think, you know, passionate people that are good at what they do you know, and it's like you get some wins on the board and everything in life's in a relationship, you know, so if you look after the, the next person that you're working with, they want to deal with you again yeah. and it starts building, okay. you know, and yeah. I think finding a point of difference, I think that's a big thing. Yeah, and where do you recommend um, young people in particular start, you know, because when you're at school you don't have, like, ocean class, so you've kind of got to, like, I guess do it outside of school in another way, so where do you recommend people start? 
Yeah, well, just I think going to university and um, doing a marine degree could okay. be a great way to do it. Yeah. Um, you know, to be honest, there's a lot of people that don't make a good living out of it, yeah. you know, and it is hard to get into it. So mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I've got great answers for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, what would the 16-year-old boy you were think of who you've become today? Oh, you know, it's so far beyond my wildest dreams. Yeah. So far beyond that. And this, my story's only just beginning as well, Absolutely, you know, and that's the yeah. exciting thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have so many shake my head moments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, awesome. I really do. Yeah, so you're living the dream, literally. I am, yeah. 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 Is there any bit of advice you would give your 16-year-old self? Yeah, I, I think um, I think just working really hard at what you do. Yeah. You know, find finding something you love. Yeah. You know, people say, if you find something that you love, you never work a day in your life. I, yeah. I tend to disagree. I don't know if that's quite true. I think okay. I think you work even harder. Yeah, yeah. Because you okay. love what you're doing. Yeah, very true. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool. And just before we finish off, I mean, um, what would be some parting advice that you would give for people who are looking at applying for an A&P scholarship, but just kind of like sitting on the edge and needing a bit of inspiration? Uh, I think, I think... When you get to put something together, a package together and present it to people, whether you fail or succeed, I think it's really important. Yeah. Yeah, like I went into a contest about three years ago and it was a Dragon's Den type of contest okay. and I didn't win. Yeah. I, I, come, I was crowd favourite on the night but I didn't win. But what I'm, what I'm glad it did is it, it made me actually put things down on paper. Mm -hmm. It made me think about it. It made me try to sharpen it up. And when I didn't win that first time, I was definitely a lot sharper the next time and I won the yeah, contest yeah. the next time and I wouldn't have won it the next time if I hadn't entered the first time yeah. and likewise that contest I think sharpened us up for AMP scholarship so I think these things are really important if you've got a big vision you, you've actually got to put it into action somewhere yeah, yeah. you know it's not enough just to dream and talk about it you actually have to do something about it yeah. and I think that's the great thing about AMP scholarship is that you're actually doing something about it you're putting it on paper you get it out there and it's amazing when you actually put stuff on paper and you start thinking about it and you start acting it out, it starts living out. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's like you might fail, but it's like, okay, we just need to sharpen this and you move forward, you know? Yeah, awesome. Mm. Okay, so to finish off, Steve, I mean, um, it's an amazing story and we can't wait to see what's next. So can you look down this camera here and tell us, in summary, I mean, what are your wise words for the people of New Zealand? Oh, holy oh. shamali. <laughs> <laughs> I think New Zealand, we have the most remarkable country. I think we're, um, we love our nation so much. And for me, my passion's about the ocean. And it's like, I want to engage Kiwis with our ocean. And it's like, some of the things that happen in our ocean, if it happened on our land, I think there'd be an absolute outcry. And it's like, the ocean is just as much New Zealand as the land. And it's like, for me, it's like I want to engage New Zealand with that and so we're emotionally attached with our ocean and we, uh, and we look after it as well or better than we do the land because it's such a special part of who we are. Thanks so much. Pleasure. Thank you. Cool. Thank you.